So, Alex, <laughs> let me ask you this. If you were to go back right now to look at all the, because you, I know you got a lot of time to talk with Kirby, but when you started out, what you know now is different than what you know then. What would have been the first question you asked Kirby as opposed to what you did ask Kirby? And then for Kirby, what's the answer to this question? Go ahead, Alex. Okay. Hmm, man, that's a good one. Yes. Um, yes, it is, Kirby. Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is, Alex. Come on. I would say um, it, it took me a while to actually uh, jump right in. And, and I understand mm-hmm. Kirby's mm-hmm. coaching method where – uh, you know, you, you can't just tell people, you know, dump everything you've got into right. investment. Um, but I would say if I could have shown uh, that risk, that I was willing to take that risk earlier, mm-hmm. that I would have came to him that way. Um, because I think it took about leading up to a year before I showed him that I was willing to pretty much put everything I have into investments. Um, mm-hmm. So if I could have went in earlier, I think I could have maybe made more before that point. Okay, so for you, fair enough. So for you, Kirby, mm-hmm. when that person comes to you like Alex did, and he says, "Hey, listen, I'm I'm ready to go, all in. I'm I'm putting family. I, I don't care. I'll live in a hotel. My uh my grass. I've got a you know I've got a great camper. I'll go outside <laughs> sleep under stars if I have to. What <laughs> what's what's the way? Because like you said, there's risk to everything." And even jumping in is sketchy. It can be very sketchy. So what's your advice to that person, particularly those who are in the military? Because we know there's Joe Snuffy out there who just bought a BMW coming back from Afghanistan, Kuwait, or wherever else. What, what's, right. your, what's your guidance to them? Uh, if The first thing is follow the numbers. The numbers is – I know we talked about risk earlier, but numbers, numbers can mitigate the risk a lot. If you know the numbers – and you have to do the work to find out the numbers. Don't just take anybody's word for it. But if you know the numbers, that's how you do it. But as you're saying in this scenario, my advice to somebody who say they're ready to go all in is to go all in. I'm not saying just, all right, here's my here's a, all my life savings. Here, take it. You right. do it. What I mean by go all in is, is you want to go all in and do the work, do the time that it takes to find out the numbers if you're investing in stocks, find out the number if you're investing in real estate, find out what you need. Right. Going going through the steps to continue excuse me, to continue to gain knowledge through the process. And then once you have the knowledge and you find something that you're for sure about, go ahead and do it. I mean, me, I process faster. That's probably why Alex would say, Oh, he's crazy, just he's all in. But I process <laughs> the numbers faster. But but yeah, I am somebody who will see a deal, like a run of numbers, close right. to almost in my head, and then be on the deal that fast. So you underwrite all your deals and all that great stuff as well? Yeah. yeah. Were you always that good at, at the numbers, or that was something you had to develop? Uh, it was. I was good at numbers, like A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, good. But <laughs> what it, <laughs> over time, over time, you okay. know, it, it, that's what it is. Is I, You know, of course, the first deal you do in real estate, it ain't going to be the best deal you ever make. Uh, but you once you do the deal, you find out what's the good, the bads, find out where you can fix your numbers, find your adjustments there and things like that. And then when you go for the next deal, you're going to try to make it better than the deal before. And then you just keep plowing through. As long as you understand where the cash flow is coming from, right. having that cash flow set up, making sure you got a reserve and things like that, and then keep going to the next deal and keep growing out your portfolio, you'll be fine. I like the advice. I, I'm I'm going to absolutely disagree with you though a little bit here and hear me out. Right. So I feel like every deal you do, especially the first deal is the best deal you can do. And the reason I say that is because the amount that you learn from taking the L's in those deals, ah, oh, it sells you so much money down the line. Like I did the flip that I did. I lost all of it, <clears throat> but I lost a lot of money on that. Let's just say lost a lot of money on that. And I even partnered with somebody with more experience, but the stuff that I learned from that, Oh, I had no idea what a French drain was before I flipped the house. I, I didn't even know French had drains like that, but apparently they're in the U S too, just like French fries. I, France is everywhere now. So I, I, I agree with you. Based on the knowledge base, it's nothing like the first. Nothing. So I, nothing. I that. 
what I, what I, I was talking about financially. Side of it. Yes, you're, tracking. Okay, you're sorry. Right. my you're bad. 100%. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right. But yeah, actually, like, but you like you said, financially speaking, if we're just talking strictly the dollars and cents of it, one hundred percent, you're going to take the L most likely the first deal. Mm-hmm. Alex, I understand you just got finished knocking down a deal. What's what's going on? How how'd that go? What was that experience like? Uh, the experience was terrible. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, I kind of like I, I talked about this in Kirby has a, a stock market class, but well, it's, it's a finance class basically. But uh, I told people in the class, you know, it kind of just felt like Kirby just wrapped a like a blindfold around my eyes and was like, just keep going. I, like I got you. <laughs> like I mean, I really had no idea what I was doing. I was texting him. I, I was like, man, I'm probably annoying the crap out of him. Like texting him so much asking him every little question before i even message the, the the seller's agent i would ask him i would screenshot and be like hey does this message look good <laughs> like i i really had no idea what i was doing but eventually everything it, it came through it, it, you know it, everything's good right now so but it, it takes it, it's uncomfortable for sure in the first one that's a fact it's that is that is a fact now that you've knocked down the first one though what's the next step for you in your your so, journey investing yeah so i was saying um i wanted to buy a property and i wanted to give myself like a year wait till 2024 but okay. kirby was like you know if 2023 comes and you know prices start to drop you're just going to miss out on all those deals and uh which is very true so i'll have to go a lot harder on uh saving putting money aside to get a to start looking into getting a property 2023 but I would like to get a uh, a multifamily, uh, duplex, triplex, something of that sort. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Sorry. Every time somebody <laughs> says multifamily, I get excited. I apologize. All right. <laughs> Kirby, what's – all right. That's – something Alex said was key to me just now. Um, mm-hmm. He said your advice to him was to have money ready to, to take on some shots in 2023. Right. What are you seeing in the market as it stands right now that's telling you, hey, this is this is the time we need to be taking shots? Well, what I'm seeing right now is the interest rates, the interest rates going higher. I'm seeing days on market for homes a lot longer. Mm-hmm. I actually see a home in my neighborhood right now that's been sitting on the market, you know, six months, eight months, two years ago. It had been off the market in a week. Now it's been on the market for 40 days. And I know why it's because the interest rates has risen and then realtors still believe, and I'm not going to talk bad about realtors on this show, but <laughs> realtors still believe that people are looking at the list price on houses, but in truth, they're looking at how much they can afford per month. Mm. So this same house when interest rates was at 2.5%, you would have paid between 12 to $1,800 a month. But now that interest rates are at seven to 8%, they're paying almost $3,500 a month. It's a big gap in how much people can afford a month. And then when it comes to the realtor side, again, it, they're still thinking, I mean, coming to the investor side, excuse me. Right. The realtors still believe that, and the sellers believe that their people are looking at the sale price. But the truth is they're looking at the cash flow. They're looking at how much money can they make after the place is rented, if the place is already rented, is the rents that, they're, that they'll, they'll be receiving once they acquire this property, would that be enough to handle the maintenance, handle the property management, handle the debt obligation that it had and still bring money to the investor? But the real estate agents, and I actually just had a call with the real estate agent uh, earlier this morning, just explaining that to her, the, the nuances of what market we're going into. Right. And with, with all that stuff that I just mentioned, days on market, higher interest rates, uh, a lot of people just jumping out the market because it's too expensive for them to... Uh, pay for things on a month-to-month basis because the prices are just way higher if they pay this interest rate it's going to leave a lot of opportunities because people there's going to be four sellers in the market people that need to sell Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of white collar jobs especially in silicon valley it hasn't gravitated over here to our side of the country yet losing their jobs and stuff like that so it'll be people have to be forced to sell their homes because they don't have a job or something like that and then they're going to have to knock off a lot of those dollars to sell that home and the homes in the neighborhood of course you know how it goes if a home sells for less price then right. all the homes in the neighborhood start going down for less price the cops drop lower so i'm seeing all that stuff happening in a vacuum right now so i'm just stacking cash stacking cash stacking cash to be prepared for when opportunity hits and go for it 